Hello and thank you for joining us today for our second remote deposit capture webinar. Today's topic is understanding the RDC application process. First, we're going to have our national sales manager Vince Pellini discuss uh, some of our products that Unilink offers that can help you with your RDC process. And then we're going to have the presentation passed over to our partner and RDC specialist, Carolyn Dowdy, and she'll take over the remainder of the presentation. Hello, and welcome to the second installment of our series of webinars on remote deposit capture. Thank you for joining. I'm Vince Pellini, sales manager for Unilink. We think today's presentation will provide you some valuable information. Before we begin, I would like to show you where you can find tools you can use for your remote deposit capture program. Let's take a look at training webinars. Uh, we've circled remote deposit capture custom employee product training. Uh, grow and promote your bank or credit union's remote deposit capture program and be prepared to discuss your RDC products and services offerings with customers, auditors, and examiners. A basic requirement for a successful remote deposit capture program is the employee's knowledge of the bank or credit union specific RDC product and services. Plus, during remote deposit capture audits or exams, this training web webinar will be considered RDC employees training. Next, let's take a look at training PowerPoints, and we've circled Remote Deposit Capture Employee Product Training PowerPoint. The Remote Deposit Capture Employee Product Training PowerPoint provides a simple and easy way to train your bank or credit union employees on your Remote Deposit Capture program. How can your employees effectively sell and promote RDC if they don't know the specifics of the technology offered, the RDC features, or the program attributes? Plus, you can count this as written RDC training to provide evidence to the examiners that you are training your staff to know your focused targeted RDC customers. Next you'll see forms and packages and here is where you'll find all the different forms that are available and uh, again you, you can click on any of the titles and get a further detail. There are, each package has a different number of, of forms that are included with it as well as different titles. Uh, I think for everyone that's involved the book that's Remote Deposit Capture Task List I've read this book and this is just jam-packed with valuable information and how-to's that I think uh, is a must-read for anybody with remote deposit capture. Okay, and next is our webinar special. And this is available to only those attendees who have uh, had a chance to, to review the, the, uh, um, the slides and the, the presentation by Carolyn. But we have a, a particular product, the um, remote deposit capture application. That's going to be especially discounted at $39.95. That's $39.95. To order, simply call us here at 800-666-2980. My extension is 20, or you can email me at sales at unilinkinc.com. I'd also like to mention another couple programs that we've got going on. For example, um, we have available right now a Burroughs trade-in program. Uh, so you definitely want to contact us for the information about that as well as a Panini buy four get one free scanner promotion. Uh, we've got a lot of customers taking us up on that one. Um, and uh, also check us out or give us a holler to see if there's any special promotions that we, we may be running that aren't advertised. And now I'd like to introduce you to Carolyn Dowdy. Carolyn is the founder and, of RemoteDepositStore.com and president of Bank Project Solutions. She has more than 25 years in banking experience as a bank consultant, her primary focus is on implementing RDC, training, and establishing compliance in financial institutions. Also, during her career, she has been part of senior management in two new startup banks in Georgia. With that, I'll turn it over to Carolyn. Take it away, Carolyn. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Understanding the RDC Application Process. The topics we're going to cover include the evolution of the RDC application, reasons to develop an application, titling and using the application for multiple purposes such as cash management services, identifying who should take the application and why, information and its importance on the RDC application, and the benefits of a bank internal addendum to your application to support the information you get from the customer the compliance and legal review of the application and at the end we'll have the webinar resources. What about the evolution of the RDC application? 
What were some of the pioneer institutions using for an application when RDC first hit the market several years ago? Well, it was probably an RDC system setup form because a lot of the institutions in the earlier years were just taking the name and address and maybe the maximum limits of the customers. They were not really feeling, having the customer fill out a formal application. Well, what do you think the small and larger institutions were using for an application? Well, for lack of guidance on the topic, probably a system set up for them also. But then the larger institutions probably developed some kind of application or they included the application process within their cash management services application. Well, what are some still using? Probably the system setup form, which may not support pertinent questions that should be asked. Why have an RDC application? Well, for pertinent information, as part of your due diligence and suitability evaluation, to mitigate the institution's risk. The reasons to develop an application, well, the reasons include, but they're not limited to, it supports established policies and procedures and the controls of the institution. It supports the fact-finding criteria as established in the underwriting policy. For example, your institution, who are their focused customers? And who are their decline customers? It's considered as part of the customer's due diligence and suitability process to mitigate the institution's risk to include fraud, money laundering, and information security. It standardizes the application process throughout the institution and it supports your compliance program. It establishes a basis to set RDC limits for deposits and for the level of monitoring on that particular customer. It contains appropriate authorizations that are signed by your customer, such as an authorization to obtain credit. And also, we want to include and talk to you about, there's a tip on this slide, your application is a control that can be put on your risk assessment because you're mitigating risk, so it is a control, so you may want to consider that if you haven't put your application on your risk assessment as a control. The next section we're going to talk about is title and purpose of application. What should we call the remote deposit ca capture application? Well, probably remote deposit capture application unless you want to include those questions on your cash management services application. You can decide to have two applications, one RDC and then one cash management services, or you can incorporate those all into one application. So you may want to call it cash management services application. And it really depends on the specific products and services questions that are on that application. For example, you may ask a question about RDC check image. You may ask them if they want RDC check conversion. Are they doing ACH origination credits for payroll? Are they doing ACH uh, debit? Uh, originations for things like dues, do they want positive pay? There's certain questions that you're going to have on here to evaluate your customer and to target them uh, for different services and also find out what their needs are. Well, the reasons that you want to consider maybe uh, one multiple purpose application, well, the basic questions and the information needed is the same to evaluate the customer. So you're going to be asking the basic same questions that you'd be asking on either application. Uh, it streamlines the application process. It standardizes the application process, which supports your policies and procedures and underwriting guidelines. There's less training and instruction needed for your treasury manager, or maybe your RDC coordinator, or maybe it's your lender or your new business development staff. There's one application for them to actually understand and learn. It saves your institution time and or money. You just will use one form instead of having to use multiple forms and applications. Who should take the application in your organization and why? Well, should it be your treasury management department personnel? maybe your deposit ops personnel or the RDC services coordinator. If you have these assigned departments or coordinators even in your institution, you may want to assign it to your new business development personnel or your branch managers or your lenders. 
uh, is your institution large or small? This will determine who your management will assign this uh, application responsibility. Do you have one location or do you have multiple locations? If you have one location, you may assign it to anyone in the department or personnel that we mentioned above. Uh, what about multiple locations? You may be better served if you assign the application process to your new business development reps or your branch and assistant branch managers or your lenders. If you've got multiple locations, you may want them taking the application and then sending it for underwriting uh, to a central location. It's just more efficient. But that is uh, something that the institution will have to make a decision on, what's best for their environment. Well, really, is there a hard, fast answer or best practice, or do you think there's a right and wrong way to assign out the application responsibility? Well, I personally don't really think there is. Uh, you d just assign the appropriate personnel to coordinate with your financial institution's size and structure and their complexity. In essence, you know, essence, what works best for your institution and operating environment, you just need to evaluate that. Why should the institution be selective when you're assigning the application responsibility? Well, the staff member may not understand the purpose or really be able to explain the to the customer why certain questions are on the application. So it's strongly encouraged that you train your assigned staff on the application process and the content, what it means and why you're getting that information. And it's a must as you will have product specific questions and credit worthiness evaluation questions. So what you want to think about here is what I have seen is that when you go into an institution, you know, a lot of times, especially in the early years, we wanted to throw RDC setup over in operations or the marketing director or someone that really wasn't trained in evaluating and doing underwriting. So then, uh, you know, we've talked to the lenders and chief credit officers say that you need to do the underwriting, and then they say, well, you know, RDC, they feel like it's really just an operational process. But really, it takes both departments. It takes the knowledge of the operations department and it takes the experience and the knowledge of the underwriters or the lenders in order to do your due diligence and suitability and credit uh, worthiness evaluation for these customers. So you need to have those folks come together and decide how that's going to be done, but be sure whoever takes the application understands your products of your bank, like if your lenders are taking it, make sure they understand the products that are available, and then if your operations or treasury manager taking it, make sure that they understand if the customer asks them why they're asking for certain information such as your financials or your tax forms because the customer is going to say, well, I just want to make a deposit. And I'm sure you've heard that. The next section is on information and its importance on the application. Basic application content may include, but it's not limited to. Now, these are things that you might see on an application. The business name and the DBA, if it's applicable, their address, their tax ID number. Now, when we talk about business name and doing business as, you may have ABC Corporation doing business as a cookie factory. So you have got trade names that companies are doing business by, and you want to know that. You want to know the nature of the legal business and services. You want to know if that company is domestic or international. Because if they tell you as a business that they're a flower shop, then you want to know that that's actually what they're doing. And so when you go out for their site visit, you're going to know that they're a flower shop. And you're going to know probably and figure out what kind of volume they should be having. You're going to want to know how many locations and where they're located. Uh, you, it, maybe they have a, a corporate, main corporate office in Atlanta and they may have satellite offices in Arizona and California. You want to know where those uh, scanners are going to be shipped and where they're going to be sending uh, items to you from. Uh, you're going to want to know their annual sales and volume. If they tell you that they're making $100,000 a month and they start sending you three or $400,000 a month in RDC deposits, then you're, that's sort of a red flag. You know, where are those funds coming from? You want to know the date the company was established. 
Uh, you want to determine the type of ownership, such as proprietorship, an LLC, a corporation. You want to know what type of entity they are. Uh, when you run their credit, you're going to want to know if there's bankruptcies or charge-off information. Uh, also, the next section here, remote deposit capture information requested, might include. We're going to go through a list here of examples of questions you might put on an application that are important. Just because they're on the slide doesn't mean that you're going to put them on your application, but there may be pertinent information that you want to ask so that you can evaluate what the customer is going to be running through RDC and also how to set their maximum limits on your system and determine what their maximum limits may be. Number one is going to be types of checks taken for deposit. Well, is it a business check, personal checks, money orders, cashier's checks, third-party checks, traveler's checks, or other? Basically, when you have a customer transmitting into RDC into a depository account, the payee on the check should be payable to that business or the title of that account. You may have customers, if you tell them in your contract that they can send through third-party checks, you may have some personal checks coming in that have been endorsed over to that business. Um, if you start having a large volume of them, then you may wonder if they're you know, a money service company. So there's some red flags that might be going on there. So you need to understand at the application process what kind of items your customer typically sends through. If they start sending through a lot of cashier's checks for under $3,000 or money orders or things like that, you may figure out that they may be money laundering. They may be going to purchase items right under 3000 at another bank to money launder and then run them through RDC. So these are things that your BSA officer will want to know. Uh, you want to know the number of scanners, the speed of scanners, geographic location of scanners. Think about the speed of your scanners. You know, back in the earlier years, I know that some banks were putting in the hand feed scanners in a high volume office, and that is very frustrating to the operator that's transmitting if they're having to hand feed all those checks. So think about the volumes and purchase the appropriate scanner for that customer. Here are some items that you may want to go through. The highest single deposit dollar amount. You may want to know that. You may want to know the highest daily deposit dollar amount that it's expected from that customer. What's the highest number of checks in a single deposit or the highest dollar amount of a single check in a deposit? What are the highest numbers of checks deposited each day? The highest number of deposits made each day? Are they making one or two or three deposits a day? the highest number of checks deposited each month, also the highest number of deposited items returned in a month. You may want to know from that customer, which if they're already your customer, you may be able to get that information. You may want to get it for three months or six months or nine months or a year. It's up to the institution. Uh, what's the highest number of chargebacks each month? You know, you may want to ask three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. It depends on what the institution wants to know. Highest dollar amount of chargebacks in a, in a month or in the last 12 months or the last three months. So this is criteria that you may want to put on your application where you sort of understand your customer. Other information may include references from other financial institutions you know, the customer is or has done business with. Uh, for example, inquire if they have RDC elsewhere. Do they have cash management services elsewhere, such as ACH payroll? You want to know if they're dealing with different banks. And ask them if they've ever been declined or uh, terminated for these services. Because then you're going to ask why you were terminated. You want to investigate that because you don't want to get a customer on the books that are going to be a problem or, have, or the bank have a potential loss. Uh, you next you want to find get a vendor credit reference. Call that vendor and find out about that part that customer or person because you may not have done business with them before. Also on that application you're going to detail who the principals of the company is and their information. For example, you're going to want their name and their address and their driver's license and the state and the expiration date of their license 
their SS number, other acceptable ID that's under your customer information program, uh, home, cell phones, place and date of birth, and the percentage of ownership if it's applicable to that situation. Uh, and also on this information, you want to be sure that you gear this um, information on the principles back to your uh, identification that's in your customer information program. Correlate those two. And then documentation that you may request that, that would accompany this application, for example, would be your organizational documentation, uh, business filing certificates, signed federal income tax statements, or financial statements, personal financial statements on the principles, their W-2s, their past bank statements. Do you want to get three, six, nine, twelve months of past bank statements if they are not your current customer and you don't have a historical trend on them? and a current resolution, for example, and other things. So what do we want to talk about here? The organizational documentation and that uh, their business filing certificates and things like that and their current resolution, all of that you should have gotten when you opened the depository account. Uh, these signed federal income tax statements or financial statements, when you develop your underwriting program, you need to make a decision of when you're going to ask for those documents. You know, you may say if it's a small mom and pop type business under 10,000 volume a month, we're not going to get uh, uh, federal income tax statements or financial statements. But it's up to the institution what their risk tolerances are. So just try to be consistent with that and put it in your underwriting guidelines. And another thing I want to talk about is you need to make sure that your current resolution uh, states who's authorized to es es execute these contracts between the customer and the bank. Uh, you need to go back to those resolutions. Make sure you've got a current one on file because typically what I've seen is you've got a resolution and it'll state who's authorized to open deposit accounts and endorse checks, who's authorized to uh, make loans for the company, who's authorized to set up safe deposit boxes, and then it usually has an other category. So right there is where you can type in who is authorized to sign these RDC contracts or your ACH liability contracts or your cash management service contracts and so on. So be sure that you have updated resolutions. And the information might include two uh, credit reports on your principals, owners of that company, and then a Dun & Bradstreet report on the business if it's available. It's not always available. All businesses do are not part of Dun & Bradstreet. You have to pay a fee to become a part and use its larger type companies. So if you have a situation where you do want to get information and figure out the credit worthiness of that particular business, not only the principals but the business, is you'll get profit and loss statements in their previous tax returns and then your um, underwriter there will evaluate that customer. And don't forget to have signed authorizations to run background checks and credit as appropriate or required on your application. Uh, consider other requirements like internet gambling companies. Make sure they have license. You may say, we, don't, we just don't set them up, period. And remember your Bank Secrecy Act and your OFACT and your U.S. Patriot Act. Know your customer, getting customer information. All of this should really have been addressed when you originally opened your depository account. So a lot of this information is already on file with your institution. And the compliance department really needs to be alert and think about the proper title ownership of the depository accounts and any additional company relationships the customer wants to add to RDC. And to give you an example of this, you may be have a... Uh, owner of ABC Corporation that owns most of the stock and then he may have an LLC and then he also has his own his and wife per, his personal account and he's closely a closely held company and he asks he says well I want to run all these accounts through my RDC well just talk to your attorney and your compliance and be sure that you've got the par proper contract signed for the different entities and for him personally because a lot of banks want to do this and you do have that request from these closely held company, so just make sure you've got your contracts in order. Other information uh, you may want to uh, get is through that benefits of an internal bank form that's an addendum to your application. 
uh, on that form years ago, we went out probably five years ago with the first bank that I set up RDC before there were even guidance. We'd go out and talk to the customer about RDC. We were really promoting RDC. And when we would go out, the customer would say, well, I want cash management services and I'd like to do ACH payroll and do you have positive pay and do you have bill pay? And so it goes into all these other products and services the bank may or may not offer. So what we would have to do is sit there and write down on a piece of paper all about that particular customer and then we got back to the bank and we'd go over it with who at whomever and then we would type it up. This supporting addendum here outlines all the different products and services of the bank sort of in a checklist form and you just mark yes they want it, yes they want it and then if a customer asks you something that you're not sure if you have the service then you can just write the question down and get back with the customer. Other information you may want to put on that supporting document might include your current loans whether it's at your institution or another, other deposit accounts, total, other relationships like they want bill pay or positive pay, uh, mark if they want ACH origination credits to do payroll, they may say we do payroll twice a week or once a week or whatever. Uh, they may want to do ACH origination debits like uh, billing company, uh, someone for their dues, like if it's a tennis club, they may want to bill their members for dues. Uh, other type cash man management services they may require for an example is they may want to make their tax payments. They may currently be with an institution where they can originate an ACH credit to pay their taxes. And they may say, hey, I want to make my loan payment internal. So that would be an internal transfer through the cash management system. They may say, I want to do ACH payments external. So you need to understand and ask them questions on all this and be under sure that your bank or system can do what they're asking you. And also write down their current and past NSF and chargeback history. And then on that form too, you may want to document that all that, that you confirm that you've got all the CIP information uh, at the beginning when you set up the depository account and that you've established a BSA rating. All institutions may not rate low, medium, high BSA, but they do have a worksheet where they look at these customers. Uh, and also, has OFAC been checked? And then also you may want to document on that supporting document uh, what happened at the site visit or what the situation is as for a customer self-assessment. You know, all institutions, these are based on risk, level of risk, and all institutions may not be doing these if they're setting up all low-risk customers. Averaging collected balance history, uh, you want to put that on your form. That's going to be very important uh, for underwriting. Uh, you want to mark if the customer wants to do RDC check image that was brought about by the Check 21 Act. And also remember that some customers may be doing RC, RDC ACH check conversion. So you need to understand if they're currently doing check image or ACH check conversion or if they want to do both. And they may ask you if it integrates, if your RDC integrates into their uh, accounting system. So you need to understand that when you go out. So basically you need to understand all about that customer's environment because the last thing that you want to do is commit a service to them that you can't really do and then have all the deposit accounts set up and then not be able to service the customer. The next section is compliance and legal review. Uh, I want to strongly suggest before you use any application or during the development of application have your legal and compliance review anything before you implement it into your institution. This is because there may be some special wording that you need to have to give authorization to do background checks or credit, whatever that may be, and you want to make sure that compliance is signed off on it and legal is signed off on it before you implement it. I uh, want to mention that this presentation may not include all, all requirements. It supports the due diligence customer suitability process, but may need to be expanded or modified if your institution is setting up high-risk BSA customers. For example, foreign correspondents or for, foreign money service businesses or certain mail order companies are considered high-risk. There are institutions out there that are going to have, that are going to uh, service high-risk BSA customers, but when they do, they just have to do more due diligence and monitoring. So 
uh, just keep that in mind. The resources that are outlined is the FFIC uh, IT handbooks, which are on the FFIEC.gov site. Because we mentioned some things in here that were regulatory, we referred back to those. Uh, the BSA handbook, uh, refer back to your risk management remote deposit capture. And then some of the information that I'm giving you is just things that I think that would be practical to use when you're taking an application because this supports your policies and procedures. Uh, I thank you very much uh, for attending our free webinar and we hope that you will uh, attend other webinars that we have. I uh, want to mention that we will have a template for remote deposit capture application and it does have that addendum document to it and for our attendees we're going to offer it at $39.95 and we thank you very much. Uh, Unilink wants to be your one-stop shop. Not only do we provide sc check scanners for uh, remote deposit capture but we have a host of other products as well as different manufacturers available to you in different products from check scanners to signature pads financial printers photo ID scanners check joggers document scanners document management software I mean just a host of anything that you may see in and about around your teller counter or in the back room so if there's any particular product that you're looking for please give us a call our number here again is 800-666-2980 extension 20 and my name is Vince if I'll be able to help you with that one thing we would really like to stress and point out to, to, to any of the, those listening today is that it's not just about price, it's about value. And uh, we've invested a lot of time and effort into creating a website that we think is uh, not only just a, a, a great resource for you folks, but a valuable tool as you're looking at your operations. For example, uh, we have a host of videos and how-to videos and how-to manuals that are located on the website and uh, we can provide you with any type of pro a remote deposit capture program that's available so if you wanted to ship to the end user directly rather than uh, source the, the, the product and have it sitting in your, in, your, in your branches you can do that with us we can also invoice the customers directly if you prefer if, you, if not we can sell directly to the, the, to the uh, end users so if you've got someone who wants to promote remote deposit capture but not sure which type of scanner, we can provide them with that, uh, that extra resource and that, that help to, to make sure they get a good decision. Um, we are also an authorized repair facility center for all the major brands, including Burroughs. We are actually the only authorized Burroughs reseller outside of Burroughs themselves to be able to fix and repair Burroughs scanners. But a host of other manufacturers such as Canon, Epson, Digital Check, Panini, we've got the, uh, the, the knowledge and the tools to be able to, to repair anything that you've got available. Uh, refurbished equipment. Now, this is an area that is of, of keen interest to a lot of remote deposit capture programs because it can save the customers a lot of money, uh, up to 75% off the cost of new. So we've got a host of different products available from the, uh, on the multi-feed side. So just give us a call, and that includes the... the uh, the Panini My Vision X, the, uh, the, the Burroughs Smart Source, as well as RDC, as well as Digital Check, Canon as well. Give us a call, let us know about that. We have a host of rental and leasing options in case you might want to pick a purchase. We do have uh, that available to you. And the other thing is our easy online ordering and easy to use repair portal. These two I want to spend a little bit of time because um, I've been on a number of calls where we've actually demonstrated the, the, pro the portals to everybody. And what has been unique in each and every single time is that there's different oohs and ahs at different points throughout the presentation. Uh, but what's been most consistent is once we get to the history, um, what, what's available to you is an actual online order history. So anytime you place an order online, that history is kept and retained literally forever. So if you wanted to take a look through the history and see what you ordered last month, what you ordered this month, what you ordered two years ago. It's there. It'll be all online for you and that pricing will also be there. So it's, it's a great tool. Now when you flip to the repair portal, what's of critical interest in this is that not only do you see a history of all the repairs that you've sent to us, but also what's been done to those. 
what's, which serial numbers have been sent in. So you can flag a particular product or serial number that might be a troublesome, you might want to take it out of inventory, recycle it, or bring in something new. So it's been, it's been a, a great resource for a lot of folks, and the minute they start using it, they, they actually love it, and they they're, wonder what they did without it. Um, also on the video I mentioned to this, uh, also on the website I mentioned to this earlier, is we have uh, a number of instructional and informational videos available on each of the manufacturers. So if you click on Burroughs, you can go to the Burroughs videos, Canon, same thing, Panini as well. So we've got a number of, of instructional videos on how to maintain the product as well as how to set the product up. Those are all available to you and th there's no charge for that. Um, one of the things that I will mention is that we promote a preventative maintenance program to protect your investment. Not only do you want to cut the costs of repairs, but also increase the longevity of, of, the, of the life of the scanner. So, so by doing that and taking a couple moments to, to review the simple steps of cleaning and running a cleaning card through to make, and make sure your customers, your remote deposit capture customers, are doing that, you'll have less issues or less concerns that are raised by the customer. So we definitely want to make sure you take a look at that. Uh, we've also developed and created some custom cleaning kits. We found that manufacturers will have a cleaning kit, but we've tailored these to be more uh, targeted towards what we see people using. So you might want to take a look at those as well. Uh, we've also uh, developed and, and handle any extended maintenance programs that are available, either through the manufacturers or through ourselves. Then so we do have a number of service offerings available there. Um, another important thing is unlimited free phone support and a knowledgeable staff. You will find that there isn't another company in the industry with as much expertise and knowledge of the product out there. We've got, each of our employees has anywhere from 5 to 25 years of experience in the payment systems in the financial industry. And all that is available to you by picking up the phone and giving us a call. And um, we've also got online product updates, promotions, contests, and more. So every once in a while, hit our website or visit us on Facebook. You'll see some other things that are going on, things that we are doing to not only be a part of your life, but also the life that the, uh, the, the surroundings. We've got uh, different events that we uh, attend here at uh, Unilink, and uh, those will be posted as well. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to, to Jennifer to take it away. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Vince, and thank you all for attending. Our next webinar topic will be developing a structured RDC customer annual review process. Um, some of the topics covered are going to be why should our institution do a periodic review of RDC customers? What should we be doing during these reviews? How do we organize this process? What supporting documentation do we need? Should this process be addressed in our policies and procedures? And who should be assigned the responsibility? And you'll all be receiving more information on that soon. Again, thank you everyone for your time. We hope you found the information valuable. And I hope everyone has a great day.